Okay, welcome to the next installment in our tutorial series. In this uh, section of uh, the online tutorial, we will talk about Network Workbench, or what we'll call NWB, and some of the tools associated with that. So let's fire that up, and start. And what we'll find about Network Workbench is that it lies somewhere between what Cytoscape is, uh, being sort of a full-blown IDE, and what PAGEC is, which is what we'll refer to as sort of a calculator model. Okay, So you'll see that already just looking at this, this looks pretty different from a lot of the IDEs that we've used. It has this thing over here called the data manager, okay, and as you'll see, the data manager essentially keeps a running total of all of the different networks that you have open, and will keep track of all of the things that you generate based on those networks, okay, and we'll talk about that more. The console is here. The console basically shows you any error messages, the results of certain types of actions, and it gives you useful information, including references. Okay, most of the things, if not all of the things that are done in this in this IDE, will uh, give you references to the papers that they're based on. Okay, so make sure that you read that. That can be very handy for uh, research and. Uh, coming up with different ideas and trying to trace the origin of those ideas. You can see that this will keep a running list here of all of the things that you've done and if you if you have any long running algorithm say it'll actually let you know how far along it is. So uh, you can see already that this is uh, sort of a different layout than what we've seen with Cytoscape and there's a different sort of workflow that's required. Um, let's see a few of the things that we can do. We can obviously load files. Okay, and one of the nice things about Network Workbench is that you can uh, pretty easily pull in lots of different formats, okay, including .NET formats, which we've already seen and studied a bit. You can just pull those in, okay, it will honor them, and uh, you can work with it however you wish. Um, just to prove this to you, you can quickly visualize it with our old friend Kamada Kawai. and get a quick sense of its structure. Okay, so, um, and you can see actually in this view, you can see that different sort of springs moving around and it'll, it'll go through several generations here until it finds something that it considers uh, a, a fairly good arrangement of nodes. Okay, so this is sort of some of the basic functions. Um, Although we can work directly with .NET files for today, what I want to show you is uh, one of the files that actually comes with the product, actually comes with Network Workbench, because it's a very good test case and it's something that we will actually use later on in a few weeks. If you open up florentine.nwb, okay, again, the data manager will track what networks you have open, okay, and this icon denotes that it is in fact a network, okay. Um, and at this point, what we can do is the same thing, right? Like we can, we can visualize it if we like. Okay, and notice that we're modeling people here. We will discuss this uh, in more detail both in this tutorial and later in class. But suffice it to say, these are important Florentine people in the early 15th century. And uh, this is a data set that has been studied quite a bit and we will study that as well. Now, one of the great things about this product and the way that it's laid out is that it builds on a lot of different tools. Okay, so one thing that you'll see in a lot of the implementation of algorithms is Jung. Okay, Jung is actually a uh, Java library for uh, networks and graphics. Okay, so if anyone's interested in programming, you can actually go download Jung and work with it. So that's one of the tools that NWB builds into it, there are many, many others. Okay, the one that I think is really special is Guess. Okay, any network that you have available in the data manager, 
can be sent to Guess. And Guess gives you amazing capabilities for the interactive exploration of a data set. Okay? And this, this will be somewhat different from what you have in Cytoscape, and, and you'll see uh, exactly why in just a few minutes. Okay, so a couple of things to keep in mind. Right? Obviously, there isn't a lot of structure here. Uh, we're not sure what we're looking at. So we have the, all of the same tools that we would expect to have, and Commodicalize is a good place to start. Now, I think we can probably do a little better than that, so let's sort of reset some things, run, run Commodicalize a few times. Right, and let's see if we can get to a place where we're comfortable with this layout. Okay, we're getting there. Still not entirely happy with it though. Right, and of course you'll remember that the starting point really matters. Okay, now this actually looks like a pretty good starting point. Before we even uh, start to dem show labels and things like this, I want to point out a few things that visualization will show you right off the bat. First of all, we have something here, this structure here, that looks very solidly like a hub. And if we haven't gotten to the point in the class where we talk about hubs yet, uh, we will talk about hubs quite a bit. Okay, um, this is a you know a, a node with high degree. Okay, so this is a node with degree eight. Okay, there are eight links to it. And uh, actually, you can find that if you click on. Okay, and notice it tells you the label. This is the Medici family. It will actually show you, and you can just count the links like this, or you can simply look up. If you click on it, you can look up its degree if it's there. If it's not there, as it, as it is now not there, I'll show you how to get it there. So that's not such a big deal. Okay, one of the things that you'll see is it's really easy to sort of zoom in on different parts of the network if you want to. Uh, you can always go back and recenter by clicking that center button. But again, this would be an example of a hub, okay? So this has a really well-defined structure uh, just from running Kamada Kawai a few times. Uh, the other part of this network has a different property that we'll probably talk about if we haven't already. Um, and just while I'm talking, I'm just going to move things around to sort of emphasize some structural pieces here. Um, you'll notice one thing that we see is that this part of the network here is uh, quite dense, okay, and from a certain point of view, once I get these properly aligned, you'll be able to see just how dense that is. Okay, bear with me to straighten these out a bit. Okay, what I'm actually trying to do here is to get everything aligned so that you can see that this is very, very close to being a connected network. I just have to get things in just the right order here. Not a connected network, a complete network, forgive me. Okay, so one way to look at this is just count the number of triads that you see. Okay, if you look at these five nodes here and you look at how they're formed, look at all of the overlapping triads. Okay, we've got tons of them. And if you look, what you see is there are only a few links that aren't made. Okay, so these five, this is almost a complete network. Okay, so this is this would be an example of a very very highly clustered part of this network. Okay, so again, before we've even attached any meaning to these things, we can see some pretty clear structure here that separates these two parts of the network. Okay, now we're not going to talk about exactly what this means now. This is really a tutorial about the tool, but um, as we move forward, we'll talk about what this means. And the fact that you can see this so readily is very, very important. Okay, so this would be an example of a place where we have a lot of triadic closure. Whereas here, you can see there are lots of triads that are not closed. Okay, so we'll talk about the implications of that for this social network uh, later on. 
for now, let's just talk about how we can manipulate this graph to sort of make certain points and to emphasize parts of the network that uh, we think are, are worth emphasizing.